Now, now with that, let's go back. We've come into a new era. Last year was about returning to, you're fine. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, I can just cover it this way. We're, last year, a leaf won. See, and remember in God's time, we're transferring from one, but we won't be fully transferred into two, even though we're in the transference right now, until Passover. So you're going through this inner processing of moving from uncovering the power of the parent root that has never been uncovered. That's what one's about. And coming into a renewed new covenant in the new place you're at, in the new time you're at, and by Passover, we are now strengthened to build a house. But right now, we're starting on our home. We're starting on the house. We're shifting into the next structure, our wineskin of what we're about. The 13 colonies should be shifting right now so that they know how to really advance into harvest by May of next year. See, you want to be thinking like this. You want to be thinking in your own life. Some of you, I was thinking about you, Kathy, when that first root that came up was a root of prosperity. You need to go back to understandings you've had about prosperity and say, okay, Lord, now how do I get into the next level of fruitfulness of prosperity? And I think the enemy, I don't know what's been going on with you, but the enemy's been set against you, not wanting you to prosper in a new way. But the Lord will connect that into a new level of prosperity. And so, with that, we have now, what this means is, it's time to build the church again. We have not even been in a church season we have ju- we're just transitioning into this church. So it doesn't mean we haven't had a church. It means that now we will take on the identity that God has for us for the future. And, and we'll be better than what we've been in the past. And we're not going to be bogged on what got weeded out in the last season. We're just going to say, this is what we have to build with. And this is how we're going to build. And we've got great ability to build for the future. Because two is linked. Bait is about building the house. But you always want to look from your own house right here. Because you you have to remember, this is one of the great mysteries. God chose for you to be his house. And so, because of that, he's got to start doing something inside of all of us. Uh, For the next three weeks, Robert and I are going to be trying to help us understand how the root moves us into wholeness. Chad and I were just talking about it. Because we got to be whole. And he's got to be at home with us. The Bible says that. And so he's going to start with us, then he's going to move to us corporately, just like what we just experienced with communion. Then he's going to move with us territorially. And then we're going to start seeing the generations blend together. It's it's amazing the, the paradigm we're on. And all through this, worship is going to be taking us into new places. And so, one of the things that I have seen is that because we're actually in this new era, in a new house, in a new uh, land, what is the war? See, look at this. Uh, Bethel is one of the key words for this year. 
how will we return to Bethel and experience Bethel in its fullness? So that's good for you to teach on. And uh, so with that now, we have to move into this land. Now let me give you a few keys for this new land that we're moving in. You know last night, God opened a revelatory window. You have to keep that revelatory window open. The moment the Lord speaks something to you, grab hold of it. Don't keep waiting for Him to speak. Just grab hold of what He said. And then you'll move from there, and before long, your window is huge. And your window of revelation is defining your sphere of authority. Now, that's an important statement that I just made. Then, in the midst of what you are doing, recognize harvest moments recognize, lift up your eyes and see, for the harvest is now, recognize harvest moments. You might be at the grocery store. Take Holy Spirit with you. Take Holy Spirit with you. Be more aware of Holy Spirit in whatever you are doing. And He will cause you to recognize harvest moments. Uh, I've had times recently where I've looked at someone and, and, you know, you have discernment. You can see evil and you can see good and you can see angels. And I've said, Lord, please send somebody to that person over there. And the Lord said, I, you're here. <laughs> I will tell you one interesting, you've noticed a young man at times, he's, I've known him now for eight years, that will be up front if you watch the web. Where that young man came from was we were visiting San Antonio. Pam and I, Pam was with me. This was probably eight years ago. And we were in a parking lot, and this young guy walked across the parking lot. And my wife looked at me, and she does not do this often. She said, the Spirit of God just told me that you have to bring him into the kingdom. We were in San Antonio. Or else he will die and be in hell. Now, we're having this thing which anytime, we're not as bad as John and Cheryl, but we can have great discussions publicly. Yeah, yeah, I've matured some. <laughs> I, I knew God had spoken to her. And I went over and said, my wife told me you have to come to know the Lord. Uh, that was exactly what I said. My wife told me, you have to come to know the Lord. And he said something very ugly that's not really appropriate for an awesome place like this. <laughs> and I know it's New Jersey and Texas can be pretty raunchy too. But uh, I said, I will be following up on this. I kept following up with him. And three years ago, he called and he said, I have to come know the Lord. I mean, he said, I have to come to know the Lord. And he was in a very difficult place and he very seldom now does not worship on Sunday and he came to know the Lord and I had Keith baptize him three times before we let him out (laughs) 
We wanted to be sure he had been dunked down. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about, harvest moments. Don't miss why in the world she would have seen that guy in San Antonio. Now, he lives in Dallas. But she saw him in San Antonio. And if she hadn't seen him, I would have never had the heart nor the desire to obey the Lord like that. And yet, that's what I'm talking about. That's a harvest moment.